What's going on YouTube, man? It's your boy, The True Raw Gaming. Well, I don't wrap it up for you. I don't sure good it for you. I'm just gonna get that shit to you raw, man. In today's video, we're finally here for the Advanced For Honor Guide, Chapter 2. We finally made it, man. This will be at least a minimum three-part uh, videos for this chapter. I can add more onto it if we need more um, context and more information, but we have at least three parts. We have a lot of information to get into, so let's get straight into it and let's, let's just not talk too much. All right, so now we're going to take a look at these stages of defense. And this is very important that we pay attention to this. <clears throat> because in the different stages, we have different options that we can do to defend ourselves. One thing isn't going to work for every single stage. So level one, as you can see, is green. So it's a green stage. Um, usually here, you're going to be in neutral. Um, at this point, you can easily tell that you're on offense or that you're on defense. Whether you're completely annihilating this guy on offense you're like man this is an easy fight or oh man he, he's giving me a hard time you know he's pretty good on defense this is where you're kind of starting to figure things out here um you can choose the quote-unquote turtle here uh that's a thing if you don't know what turtling is kind of just when you just shell up and you just completely say forget my offense i'm just gonna play defense aka lawbringer um at this point, you know, you, like I said, you're just trying to figure things out here. You're trying to try and see what kind of mix up you works, what he can react to, stuff like that. You might have ran up, ran up on somebody in Dominion or, you know, or this like the, the round is just starting for a duel. You know, it, it's something along that nature. But the overall arcing thing is you are OK. At this point, you're comfortable, as you can see, it says there. But the overall part of here is you are OK. You're fine where you are. You're OK. So right here, this is level two, this is yellow. So we're starting to inch closer toward that danger area. Um, but right here, as it says, you can tell that your offense is not adequate to continue your pressure. Uh, essentially, that just means is you're, you're kind of doing your mix-ups, you're doing what you gotta do, and it's not going as smoothly as possible. Maybe you're fanging into a bash, and instead of him trying to go for a parry or just sitting there, he's dodging the bash, and his guard breaking you. He's, he's, he's easily starting to slow your offensive down where you're not able just to dog walk him like you want to. Maybe this is where you start to realize everything isn't going 100% as planned. Um, you can sense that your defense is coming. So in a sense where you're playing and all of a sudden – you're you're trying to throw some attacks and you faint and you're going and his his guard is really matching you. Uh, you try to faint into a GB and he's he's he's, he's right there and he's, he's counter GBing you. Um, you know stuff like that. Uh, this is the last point that you're going to be able to react to lights. Um, as far as appearing, um, you're not going to be able to react to anything after this. This is the last chance that you get because after this, your brain is going to go completely like off. Um, uh, the last one, it says that you're okay, but you're working. That's the overarching problem right here. It's not an issue to be at yellow. Most of the time you're going to be at yellow. This is like the average where everyone's going to be at. I don't care how good or how bad you are. You're, you're going to be in yellow at some point, but here you're able to do some things, but your opponent's not going to make it easy for you. All right, right now we're on level three. We're in the orange. We're getting real close to that danger area that we do not want to be at here. Um, so right now it says usually you didn't expect to be on defense. Um, this means that, as you says here, you got Perry to put, uh, you got Perry to be put in this position. Um, we've all been there. I don't care how good or how bad. If you've ever been parried, you've been straight to level three. If you've ever had a, a deflect out of one of your attacks, you've been straight to put to level three. If you've been guard broken out of a light attack, you've been put to level three because we've all been there. If someone's been getting revenged while you're ganking somebody you've been put to level three so everybody's been here don't don't feel bad um at this spot you're gonna be slightly uncomfortable be, not really because you, you're bad at defense but because you didn't expect it everyone's more comfortable with something that they are prepared for you really weren't prepared to be on defense because you just suddenly got parried or there's a sudden stop in your offensive pressure which puts you to level three at this point you're actively looking for a read um, you're looking, you're looking, you're looking. Maybe he's throwing a heavy. Oh, I'm thinking he's going to let this one fly. Let me go for a parry, punish him, and then get right back on offense. Or he's going to faint. He's going to go to a bash. I seen it coming. I'm going to sidestep, go into a GB, so that way I can get back on offense. You're overall, overall, you're looking for a way to get back on offense. Um, maybe you're um, out of stamina, and you're just holding out until that stamina comes back. You're just trying to block and you know wait till his stamina runs out. Um, at this point, you're okay, 
um, but you're just kind of hanging in there at this point. Um, the next level is, is going to be bad. So level four, it says, this is the red one, you're in the blender. A blender meaning, if you don't know what, if you haven't played another fighting game, the blender means you're been putting in the mix-ups. That guy's putting the work on you. He's landing just about everything he can land in the book. He's landing heavies, he's unblockables. You, you have nothing. At this point, most players who are mid to low tier, they're going to throw a random zone. Or they're going to throw a light, or they're going to throw a dodge attack. They're not going to deal with the mix-ups. If you've ever been to that point where now you're just dodging, you're just zoning, and you're trying to roll away, you've been put in low four. Um, he's just walking you down. He's doing whatever he wants to do at this point. There's, there's really not much that you can do. But you have to make a decision. You have to do something. You cannot sit here and continue to block. He's, 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 he's lighting you. He's, he's putting the pressure. He's frame-trapping you. You have to do something. Uh, it says right here the Shinobi versus the Zanhu clip. I'm going to insert this clip here um, uh, after I go back and read this because I'm still reading this. But I'll, in I'll insert the clip here so you can see it. If you've seen it, you, you know, you, you, you probably see me get toasted up. But uh, at this point, you're absolutely not okay. Just, just not okay. Level five. If you get here, put the controller down, man. There's, there's it's, it's funny, but. If you get here, you have absolutely no counter for whatever he was doing. Maybe your maybe your character is is not good. Maybe you have no idea. Maybe you're completely out of your league fighting whoever you're fighting. But at this point, you need to just go do something else because after let's say you fight this guy ten times and he's just obliterating you, you're getting five and three old, and there's nothing you can do. It's just hey man, let's just go ahead and get out of here. I'm just. You know, we've all met that player. We're like, damn, there's nothing I can do. And as you see right here, the quote, I can't do nothing. That If you said that, you've been in level five. I've been in level five before. There's a few players that made me do that. I've been retired before. I, that, I've been in level five so hard that I actually uninstalled the game and stopped playing for an entire year. So we've all been there. But, hey, man, it's just how you take it. So um uh, that's that's level five that is the fifth and final level so like i said if you get there um you need to come here go to youtube type in the true raw gaming and start learning some um, something because you're not ready to go any further round three Okay, so starting off with the basic ones, we're going to start off with the blocking, obviously. Uh, and we're going to start with the animations and knowing how some of the frame, uh, frames work with defense. Take a look how I'm throwing a light and I'm bouncing backwards. When I throw a light, he's not moving. So me bouncing backwards, the animation is telling me that I'm in the negative. Negative as far as frame advantage, okay? That means negative meaning I can't do something that is an equal speed, equal speed and, and be equal. I'm in the disadvantage. If I try to throw an attack after, he's more likely going to beat me if he throws a light. So if our light starts saying speed and I throw it right after being negative, he's going to beat me because I'm negative. Now, the heavy, as you can see, pushes him backwards, not me now. So now that tells me what I'm positive. The, 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 the animations is going to be what's going to tell you you know what you need to know as far as the information this is what you need to start doing if you want to play on the higher level of of gameplay this is what you need to start looking for so we're still on the same relative subject here but now we're going to have him throw a light right after throwing a light right after can be a really good thing if you're on defense because if the person's throwing a light and they're starting off the combos off of lights and as you can see here and i throw a light i can't beat him back out i throw a heavy i still can't beat him back out because it's, it's not the same properties as if a finisher heavy. So now I'm gonna show you what a finisher heavy looks like. That's a finisher heavy. That gives you the max amount of frame advantage. And this is what leads into what I told you in offense of frame trapping, okay? So as you can see, if you picture yourself on the other side, you can kind of see what options you have. Now this right here is just gonna show you every option all in one little clip. Now I can dodge knowing that I can't do anything about it. Instead of me trying to light right back out, 
giving him free damage, I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna dodge. As you can see now that I'm, I'm blocking, right? I can block, that's the simple thing you can do, block. You can take it to another level and you can start experimenting with maybe you wanna do something else. You can dodge kick as you see, or if you don't have a kick, you can dodge bash. Um, you know, there's a, you can do a dodge attack. There's a lot of things that other people can do depending on the hero that you're playing. Uh, you can dodge, you can, you can parry, you don't have to dodge. As you can see, I'm just parrying right after because I know I can't beat him. 99.9% .9 of the players are going to throw a light wrap. You can deflect, as you can see. You can really mix up your opponent. This is how you can actually use this, this information to your advantage to set up and set up a trap for your opponent. This is high level gameplay. Now here comes the juicy stuff. I'm giving you every single option in the game. You know, you guys don't have to do any of the work. I'm telling you every single option you can do in the game. This is crush and counter versus a parry. Notice the damage number in the bottom of corner I have turned on for you can see the actual damage versus a parry. Crush and counter does more damage, but it is a lot more riskier because if I set it up and I'm able to catch you doing it, I get a light parry off. So you have to know when to use certain things um, and we're gonna go a little bit over that into part two, but this right here I'm just telling you every single option in the game As you can see here, you can full guard um, This is something more advanced because like I said, it's gonna be a very big punish You know if if, if they can catch you that's how a lot of the advanced things are uh, If they catch you you're gonna eat some damage. You, you're gonna pay for it. There's no if ands or buts around it <clears throat> as you can see here no matter what, you know, just about every move that you that can be thrown at you, you can you can full guard as long as it's not unblockable, obviously, or a bash um, for this character at least. You can do it. Now you have BP. He has a lot more different things he can do with his, but that's that's something completely different. Uh, you have the full guard cancel, what a lot of people do not know about. Um, as you can see, some people know if you actually play the hero, but you're gonna see what I'm gonna show you. What I'm trying to do if I get the timing right. The bot's just crazy. As you can see, you can do stuff like that. And in a situation where you're supposed to be, you know, caught, um, you're not. You're right back on offense. You, you can't be punished like that. So the game, in that sense, forces you to actually know what you're doing and do the correct punish. The correct punish would be a GB. That's if I do that. If I don't do that and you try to GB, now you can't GB me. So you have to actually know what you're doing to use these things and to beat these type of things. But this is very good high level, high tier um, defense. Now this is going to be the dodge cancels and the whiff punishes. Whiff punishes are going to be really, really highly used when you get to the higher level of the gameplay, because a lot of the, the stuff that you guys are doing, you can't land on someone who can parry lights in every, every character in the game. It's hard to do that. But yeah, I mean, like I'm showing off, but that's that's how you do that type of stuff. Um, this right here is something a little bit different. <clears throat> This is uh, very difficult to do. You just completely GB someone out of their move in the middle of the startup. You have to really be on your game doing this. It's possible. I've done it. A lot of players have done it. Obviously, it's in the game. You can do it. You have to really know what you're doing. This is very situational. You have to be very cognizant because, as you can see, you eat that hit, you're eating a lot of damage. You're going to take a big punish. And that's just how the game of, of playing the advance uh, stuff is going on to the next one um, This one is um, a little bit different um, That is just as as scary as the other one because you know look how close the timing was you have to be on point You see how close that timing is. I mean the hit is, is practically going through me Next we got the raw heavy don't don't worry it, it gets it gets a lot more crazier with some of the other things that you can do and it gets hero specific now this you can do with just about every character you know obviously you can't do with highlander but you could it just gets really difficult depending on who you're playing but Artemis, you just he's, he's just really that good of a person to do with because it's hard to gb him out of his hits um his startup and the way his his design is it's hard to gb him out of his attack once it's already committed so if you time it right, um, you can actually do this really good. It works better when someone's trying to GB you. If you know they like to feign to GB, just throw a heavy out. But you got to throw it super early, um, especially if you're negative, throw it super early. That way, it can completely get him. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> um, 
you can pair your faint into a soft fainted heavier light. Now, this is a prime example with Kensei because um, if someone tries to do this and he just doesn't want to deal with the mix-ups, as you can see, he, you can do that. But as, you, as I said before, if you get caught, you're going to eat a punch. You're, you're going to pay for it. But like you say right there, if you try the GB, it's going through them. You know, you got to you gotta take these and know when to use them. I'm not just telling you to go out here and try all these moves in a game and expect to win every match. I'm giving you options. Now, there's a time and place for all of these. As you can see here, you can max out your punish by doing a heavy instead of a light, knowing he's going to GB. That's twice in a row. You have to know what you're doing and know when to do it. Play with it a little bit. Try it out. If you like it, you like it. But I'm not telling you and expecting you to do this and be perfect all the time. So right now we're playing Centurion, and you probably already know what's coming up. I, I got to go ahead and tell people you can do this. Yes, you can soft faint a heavy into a GB. And if you do the timing right, you can actually cover all options. Um, I don't get it right in the beginning, but I started getting it toward the end. Um, as you can see here, I'm, get, I'm starting to get it right here. Right there, as you can see, it would have been the parry timing, it, you know, and then I still cover the GB. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm safe. Right there is a parry. I tried to do it. You can do stuff like that, and there's not a lot of Centurions who can do it. There's not even a lot of, of Rep 70s who can do it. A lot of the guys can't do it right. But there, you know, as you can see, you can do it. Um, so, uh, yeah. That's uh, Centurion for you. Uh, I think at this point, I'm just kind of showing you can bash out. But that's that's another one. I got another guy for that. Um, this right here is something that's probably going to be more of the wild ones. Um, you can faint a heavy. You don't have to faint that. You can just soft faint right into bleed. You can try to parry on the light very timing and go straight into bleed. Now, the damage, you're going to be sure on the damage. But once you go back to neutral, you can get your health back by attacking. You can, you can get the bleed, you can up the pressure. There's a lot of things you can do. Raw damage is not always everything. Oh boy, I'm just exposing everybody's stuff today, man. Uh, we got the max delay bash. This is probably one of the most safest, most annoying uh, move in the game. On the most annoying character in the game. Uh, it's just really safe if you time it right and you perfect it. Not only will your move not show up until like the very last second, but the dodge bash actually forces the personal offense to stop the mix up because they can't hit you out of the dodge bash. Um, they have to actually stop and deal with it, whether they want to GB, they want to faint into going into the mix up, but they have to do something as far as stopping their, their combo. So this is the max delay dodge bash. So um, yeah, I'm just, just lending it all out there, I guess. But uh, yep, that's it. So next we got Orochi. Um, everybody knows Orochi. Everybody hates Orochi. He has his dodge light that's undodgeable, so you can't get away from it while he's getting one out of your attack. But if you perfect it and you time it, you can, like I said before, your attack will not show up until last minute. Now, if you do this move timed with bad internet, uh, your move will actually not show up at all. It will actually be completely invisible, and there is nothing that you can do about it. Um, just really annoying, but it is a way to get out of it. High punish though if you get caught with it. Uh, Mass delay heavy. This is the infamous Kensei. He's literally known for this. You probably seeing people all over for honor doing this. They'll do this one move with this hero because that's the only thing they know how to do. But it works. It gets you out of mix-ups and it can get you out of GBs. You know these max delays really. That's what they're really good for. Getting you out of GBs as well. Getting you out of attacks. And if you do it perfectly every single time, um, it could be a really a really like a thorn in someone's rib or something so got the good old zone option select now the actual zone option select is no longer in the game um if you remember before they used to have it where if you threw a zone at most of the time an unblockable um if they threw it you parried it if they faint it they got hit with a zone 100 percent of the time if you perfected it um, that's no longer in the game, but you will still come across people here and there who are still in the old ways of doing it. Uh, if you came back after taking a break and you didn't know, this is this is me telling you now, it, it doesn't work like that anymore. 99 times out of 10, out of 100 times, you're going to get hit with something. It's not really worth it. Not worth the stam costs most of the time. Um, you can do it still. I still do it a lot, but 
most of the time it's not worth it um but it's an option so i'm just showing you every single option you can do in the game zone option select is one of them uh one more is the raw bash if someone's trying to swing or they try to gbu and you just completely say forget the mix up and just bash out i don't have the footage anymore um it got corrupted i don't know what happened to it um but yeah that's an option so All right, so right now I'm gonna give you guys a visualization of what these attacks and percentage-wise are what they're gonna look like. Um, so right now on the screen it says low-level attacks, um, and this essentially just means that when you guys are fighting a low-level player, this is what the attacks are gonna be looking like. Now I can't give you an exact um, amount of reps to look at, um, you know what I'm saying? But you can kind of gauge when you're in the middle of a fight if he's a low, mid, or high-level player. Um, <clears throat> as you can see here, this is just a visualization because. You know, you can't tell exactly how each player is going to play. But in a general sense, you can tell that 36% of your attacks are lights. That's a that's a huge amount of lights. That's that's more than a slew of lights. That's a lot of lights. I, like these are the guys that we call light spammers. If you can if you can put it that way, if someone's light spamming, this is the category. I, I should just put light spam right there. I should probably re go edit this and put light spam right there. Um, this is what, is what you guys call a light spammer. As you can see, he's got less than half of his attacks of his lights are going to be heavies. And he, as you can see on this chart, almost half of his entire attacks is going to be just lights. The supplementary here is kind of like your your specials, you know what I'm saying? Like your, your unblockables, you know, your undodgeables. It's kind of all thrown together. We're not even going to include feints because that's just too much. But as you can see, they're just going to light and bash you to death. That's, that's really all they're going to do. They're really not going to throw a heavy unless it's guaranteed. Um, I mean, why would they? They're just going to throw lights. You, you know, as, as, as long as you can stop their lights, you're stopping that big of a chunk. I mean, he can only start off with a heavy so many times. He can only bash you so many times, you know. So if you stop that big chunk, that right there, even if you stop just the bash, if you can shut down the bashes, or you can shut down the supplementary. You have stopped essentially half of his offense. And he's just, you know, a basic low level player. But let's go into the mid tier player. Okay, so mid tier. As you can see, the chart is a different color. Uh, it also does look a little bit different as far as the percentages and stuff. Um, mid tier, this is usually going to be your average player. Uh, if you just hop on Dominion. And you're just playing with your buddies or you just hop on playing solo. Typically, you're going to run into some kind of variant of a mid-tier player. Um, if you got about, a, I would say, if you have relatively close to 100 reps, I would say, I say about 70, 70 going to about 100, you know, somewhere in there, 70 to, you know, 100-ish, you're, you're going to be about a mid-tier player. Um, I, I say that because... I don't want to say the average is above 100 because it, it's really not. There's a lot of players who play this game. Like I said, I, I'm not going to actually sit here and calculate everybody's reps and, and do the, the statistics and stuff like that. But um, like I said, if you just hop it on Dominion, typically, you know, most guys who play this game, you're in this category. Most players who play this game, most people who are on YouTube watching, you're typically going to be in this category. So as you can see, 29.5%. Uh, that's the lights is where you really want to look at right now. <clears throat> now, this is a lot better. This, this is a hell of a lot better than the last one. He was almost doing 40% of his attacks with all light attacks. But <clears throat> as you can see here, it's 29.5. 29.5, that's a lot less, but it's still a lot of That's a lot of lights. That's, that is a lot of fucking lights. <laughs> it's funny because like, like we all complain about the light spamming in this game and but damn, that's a lot of lights, dude. Like, there's a lot of moves in this game that you can do. Hell, you could GB, but <laughs> lights. Like, that's a lot of that's a lot of lights. So, typically, um, you're gonna see this character who plays who plays in the mid tier. He's usually gonna use his bread and butter a lot. A lot of people, a lot of uh, heroes in the games, their bread and butters are gonna go with uh, lights. Uh, if you don't know, if you go back to my chapter one, my bread and bread and butter is usually like your combo that or like your your strategy combo. You know what I'm saying? So for Shinobi, ours would be the kick, the kick mix up. I'm going to do dodge kick, hit you with the uh, range heavy, roll in and start rolling my 50 50s. That's why that's that. You know, that's my thing. 
uh, Raider. He's going to do the mix up into the top heavy and I mean, the top light into the zone GBs. And, you know, that that's his thing. He, you know, that that's his his bread and butter. Warden is a simple guy. He's going to do his light light. He's going to bash. He's going to feign it. He's going to full charge it. That's his bread and butter. So a lot of those guys, you have to start off or you have to get some kind of contact. And to get that, you have to start off the lights. Uh, as you can see here at the bash, the bash is 19 Point two percent. That's almost twenty percent bashes. That's a lot of damn bashes. But as you can, if you really pay attention to all these charts, uh, the way you look at it, if you pick one category and you completely shut it down, you're leaving a lot of their offense shut down, and you're really cutting down their options. For example, the supplementary, which is like I said, all the unblockables, the undodgeables, all that extra stuff. That is twenty one percent. That's a big number. That's a big number. The mid-tier players are usually using the lights. They're going to bash a little bit, throw in their little special moves. They may throw a heavy, but most of the time it's just fainted anyway. It's going to go into a guard break. That's why the heavies and guard breaks are usually pretty close. So looking at all that, <clears throat> looking at all that, if you shut down completely the bash, he has nothing but lights. Because if you actually think about it, when you go into the game, you really can't start off with an undodgeable unless you're Orochi, unless you're you're your warlord or something. You can't just come out of the blue starting off with an undodgeable. You can't just come out of the blue starting with an unblockable. Most characters can't. I don't want to say every character. Most characters can't. So if you do that, that leaves him with what? Trying to open you up. You know what I'm saying? If you shut down all his special moves, like you're able to react to the to the the uh, uh, unblockable light attack from Zong Hu. You're shutting down his undodgeable zone. All that shit is shut down. And then it comes down to, damn, he really can't do anything but just light and bash. That, that, he goes back to being a low-level player because he, he you shut down his offense, which makes your gameplay a hell of a lot better, and it's it's really easy to do. Here's where it gets tricky is because we're now going to go into the high-level players, and their chart is completely different. And boom, here we are. So this is the high level. This is the high level player. Um, you may be looking like, damn, that's, that's still a lot of lights. Here's where I'm going to get you. If you take a look at all the categories, all the categories are pretty close to the 20s, right? Now, how many categories do we have? We got the supplementary, that's one. Lights, that's two. Heavies, that's three. Bash and guard break makes five, okay? So we have five categories if all those are 20 percent okay 20 percent five times that's a hundred percent the closest you can do to having the most like mix up intensive offense is making everything close to 20 there is not a move in the game that a high level player is not going to throw when you get to this level it doesn't matter what you have to do you're going to beat your opponent some kind of how some kind of how somehow as you can see the heavies is 16 16.5 right 16.5 they're starting off with heavies they're starting a chain with the heavy they might just gb just a gb to catch you and see if you're gonna do something they may gb two three times in a row to catch you you know what i'm saying this is that when you're at this level there isn't a move that you that you're not gonna do there's really not much that I can I can explain unless you you know from watching a high level player. You might have fought one. You, your favorite YouTuber might be a high level player, and you've watched enough gameplay to know. And if you actually pay attention, and then come back to these charts, these charts are telling you exactly what these guys are doing. A lot of you guys are thinking you guys are not good at the game. I made a video on that. A lot of you guys are actually really good at the game. I've I've seen some of you guys' clips. You guys send me clips sometimes. And you guys actually are really good at the game. I've played with a few of you guys. You guys are actually really good at the game. The only thing is you need to be a little bit more unpredictable. I mean, sometimes the mix-ups that you're going to do, it means absolutely nothing. It's just to have his brain think about something else. And that's something that when you get to the higher level, that's when you're going to start doing. You're going to start doing what's called throwaway mix-ups. And it's literally just to trick the opponent's eyes to see something different. So now it gives you the impression that you have all this, this big-ass moveset when every hero in the game only has like 10 moves. 
That's why this game is a little bit deeper and it's very hard to master everything because the game itself doesn't actually explain all of this information, which is why I'm here. So just a quick take a look at this real quick. We got the lights at 27.4. That's a lot of lights, but it's very close to 20. OK, you got the GB at 14 right here. You got the bash is pretty much right on 20 percent. The heavies. 16.5 and the supplementary is at 22.3 this is a very very well-rounded offense this is this is an offense that's going to give someone problems and you can kind of play it if you go back to the chapter one and you take this chart put that with chapter one i guarantee you you're getting reported for cheating on this game that's gonna happen all right guys that's gonna conclude today's video this is only the first part of chapter two defense um, just a quick recap of everything that we learned today. We went over the stages of defense. Um, we went pretty much uh, in depth of what it looks like to be in each stage, what you're looking like, what you're feeling like, what you're supposed to be uh, thinking as far as in those stages of defense. We went over every single option in the game to defend yourself, whether it's from the basic block and parry to the actual advanced stuff as far as um, soft feints into bleeds to get out of mix-ups and to apply some kind of defensive pressure. After that, we went into a chart, uh, different amounts of charts to show you guys exactly what type of attack and how often they're throwing certain attacks, depending on the skill level and the skill ceiling of that person. Um, the next video, we'll be learning about risk management. Risk management will actually teach you guys how to actually get out of mix-ups effectively and pretty much majority of the time not have to deal with the mix-ups. So if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you guys drop a sub, drop a like. I'd really appreciate the show that you guys are actually enjoying this type of content. Well, I don't wrap it up for you. I don't sure get it for you. So we'll get this shit to you out, man. Thank y'all for coming out.